Hi, everybody. Welcome to Diamond Secrets Revealed, how to use a jewelry loop and be a pro. My name is Jennifer Vyshinsky. I am a GIA gemologist, jewelry designer, and appraiser, and I love to talk and teach about all the different gemstones, especially diamonds. So today, you're going to learn how to use a jeweler's loop the proper way. You're going to learn some tricks and learn the mistakes to look out for so you can look and, and be a pro at using a jeweler's loop. So why is it so important to be able to use a jewelry loop? Have you ever been at the jewelry store dropping your engagement ring off for repair or even bigger, shop for that perfect diamond for your engagement ring? So you should really have a comfortable handle on how to use a jewelry loop in order to see the diamond's unique clarity characteristics or those inclusions that make up your beautiful diamond. Because diamonds are like snowflakes. There are no two diamonds in the world that have the same interior or exterior characteristics. Diamonds are not only rare, but one of a kind. So today, you will finally learn the right way to use a jeweler's loop so you're not pretending to see what the jeweler is talking about. You'll actually know and be a pro. I've seen a lot of customers or a lot of people when I've been doing appraisals and they try to use the loop and I, I tell them, um, do you see that inclusion there? And they're fumbling around with it and they, they say, oh yeah, I see it. And because they don't want to look silly. You know, they don't know how to use the jeweler's loop properly and be able to identify their stone. So I'm going to let you in on the importance of why you need to know how to use the jewelry loop and learn the exact way to use it properly. So it's important to know how to properly use a loop for when you're leaving your diamond to a trusted jeweler so that you can easily identify your stone's unique beauty marks, and this is usually done at the take-in process. So it's just so you and the jeweler know what's being left. Another unique identifier would be if your diamond is certified by a gemological lab like GIA. So there may be a laser inscription on the girdle of the diamond for that particular stone. And that's a little bit more for a skilled loop user because sometimes you need to use the light to reflect and it's very, very tiny on the girdle. And it also depends how it's set because the inscription can be underneath a prong or if it's bezel set and the metal is all the way around, you can't see the girdle anyway. But if it does have that, that inscription and you can see it, that's the easiest way to identify your stone, easiest and fastest. So another more important reason to learn how to use a loop like a pro is to actually see what you're buying when choosing a diamond for an engagement ring or anniversary gift or for any other reason. You know, you want to pick something that's beautiful and right for you. So one of the most important things you need to do before using the loop and this is a common mistake, is to make sure your diamond is clean. So you don't want to be looking through the loop and seeing dirt or dust or even oils from your fingers or hand lotion. So <clears throat> about a week and a half ago, I did a live on how to clean your diamonds at home. So I hope most of you catched it, caught it. So if you didn't, you can catch it on a replay or I can send it to you, no problem. But if you have a jewelry cleaner that you bought, you can either use that, or like I mentioned in the live, you can just use a small saucepan, fill it with water, and use liquid, uh, liquid dishwashing soap, put a few drops in it, let it boil for about three to five minutes, and uh, make sure to put it on either a paper clip that's curved like a fish hook, or a little bit strainer because you don't want it to touch the metal of your, of your pot. Take it out, put it on a towel. You really want to scrub by the prongs or the bottom of your stone to get all that dirt and debris loose and off your stone. And that once you've done that, run it under some warm water, wash off your toothbrush, 
And again, gently rub it to get off that dirt and debris and to get any soap scum that may have built up from, and from the soap and wash it all off. Then dry it, pat it dry with a non-lint towel or if you have a paper towel and just uh, try and get the lint off. So once your diamond is cleaned, those obstacles will no longer be there and you won't make this mistake of thinking that the dirt or dust or oil is inside your stone. Especially if you're picking up at a jewelry store, they clean it thoroughly before giving it back to you and then it will look drastically different and you may think it's a different stone. It, you may never have seen it like so sparkly and so clean, <laughs> right? But it will be a nice surprise. Also, when buying a loose or mounted diamond, the jeweler has a diamond cloth similar to something like this. And they use it to clean or wipe the dust and debris off of um, either the loose stones or the mounted stones. So you want to make sure that they do clean it before you look at it. Uh, when I was a GIA instructor and I used to teach diamond grading and the students would plot the inclusions that were inside of the stone by either using a loop or using the microscope. Sometimes I hear all of the this um, dotting with the pen, all of this repeated dotting, and I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, we're plotting the stone. And what happened was they forgot to clean the stone before they started plotting and when I looked at it they were actually plotting the dust and I said you really have to clean your stone this way that you're plotting the correct things so you don't want to be doing Morse code while you're you know plotting inclusions that aren't there so now that you have a clean stone it'll be so much easier to see anything that's inside the stone that you want to be looking at. And this is especially key when you're buying a loose diamond. So it's most important to be able to use the loop in order to see what makes up the clarity of the stone and if it matches what's being sold to you. So just keep in mind that under magnification, these identifying characteristics or inclusions or beauty marks will most likely be easier to see as is anything magnified. So this little tiny inclusion can appear much larger when you use the loop and you wanna remember that. So keep that in mind and also keep in mind that diamonds are unique and are formed in nature. So it's extremely rare to find one that is perfect. And it's actually their imperfections which makes, it st which makes them stand apart and makes it easily recognizable. So you use the loop to see what's inside, but make your overall beauty evaluation from what you see with your naked or unaided eye. So most people don't walk around with a loop or a microscope or a magnifying glass to check out how you did in choosing your sparkling, beautiful diamond, right? It's really none of their business. You buy what you like and you buy what's right for you. So with the loop, you can also see how well the st stone is cut or polished or how well the symmetry is. And this is man's contribution. And this is something I'm gonna be talking about in a future live when we talk about cut. Um, so right now, I just wanted to let you know it's something else that you can observe with your loop. So sometimes if you have a very clean diamond or something very high in clarity, sometimes you use the symmetry or the cut as your identifying characteristic. So most jewelers loops are 10 power and they look like this. And this means that it magnifies your object 10 times. So the lens, and it will say um, triplet on it 10 times, and the 21 millimeters um, refers to the, um, the millimeter size of the lens. And that's usually the general size. It can be a little bit smaller, a little bit larger, but usually that's the millimeter size. So the lens that is used is called a triplet, which means that there are three lenses to correct for something called spherical aberration. And that's something 
like this where an object may look rounded, may look distorted. So when you correct for this spherical ab aberration, you see what you're looking at at a flat plane. You don't get that distortion. And then you need something adjusted for the chromatic aberration, which looks like this, which means that you see, this is chromatic aberration where you see um, colored reflections on your, um, on what you're viewing. So if it corrects for it, then you won't see those prismatic reflections or, and you'll see the proper color that you want to be seeing. You won't have any of those rainbow colors distracting you from seeing what's inside your stone. So with the 10 power loop, the depth of field, which means the amount of space your object becomes clear or in focus, it's a little bit longer than a 20 power or 30 power loop. So once you go higher in power, you have to hold the diamond very close to the loop to get anything in focus. And with a large stone, you'll, you won't be able to see the whole stone at once. You'll have to look at like each little part and you won't get that whole view. So let's get down to it and learn how to properly use a jeweler's loop. So the number one important thing is to keep both eyes open, okay? So you don't wanna close one eye because you don't want to strain your eyes or see spots. You wanna be able to see clearly. So I use a loop like uh, this one, which is called a Zeiss loop. And it has German, German optics, which it's also a triplet. But for me, you are able to see the inclusions clearer. You're able to see the symmetry clearer. And I highly recommend this loop. It's a little bit more, but it really uh, helps in seeing what you want to see and seeing it quickly. So with the loop that you may get in the jewelry store, you put your finger through the lid. With mine, I just hold the lid with my fingers. And you hold the loop with your dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, you put the loop in your right hand. If you're left-handed, you put the loop in your left hand. So then you wanna bring the loop up to that same side that's dominant. So if it's in your right hand, you bring it to your right eye. You don't wanna cross eyes that would look, you won't be able to see anything that way. And then what you do is you rest your knuckle, which is about an inch onto your cheekbone. So you do that to stabilize your hand so you're not shaking back and forth. So you, you put your knuckle on your cheekbone or on your cheek, wherever it's comfortable for you. And then I'll use my ring. Then with the opposite hand, you bring your object, your diamond ring or your loose diamond, and you bring it in front of the lens. And it will be about an inch away. So your thumb is about an inch, and then your object will be about an inch away. And you want to kind of rest it on your fingers to also stabilize that. And you bring it to where everything seems clear or looks clear to you. And the trick to seeing the inclusions is to rock and tilt it, especially if you have light on it. This way you can catch the light on any inclusions. So you move it back and forth because certain um, inclusions, you, can, you won't be able to see it straight on. So if you tilt it a little bit, you may be able to see it better that way. And also you wanna move your object around to be able to see it more, everything more clearly. So put your knuckle on your cheekbone, hold it and then hold your object about an inch away and rock and tilt it so you see everything in view. Now an extra bonus tip, and this is from many years of helping people use the loop, is that if you are holding your diamond with tweezers, so like this, and you're looking at it through the loop, you may see metal reflections. So <clears throat> this is actually from the tweezer. So you wanna make sure that it's metal reflections and not inclusions that are inside your diamond 
So if you rock and tilt the stone and the reflections disappear, then they're not an inclusion. And the way to hold tweezers with uh, holding the loop is again, you put your knuckle against your cheek and then in between your pointer finger and your middle finger, you put the you rest the tweezers because that's about an inch away also. And again, you're resting things on your face or on your fingers. This way they stay stable and then you can rock and tilt it or move it back and forth to see the inclusions. So you want to rest and then rest. This way everything is stable. Now, to double check and make sure it's not the tweezers, what you can do is hold it and look at it by its side. And the easiest way to do that is to put the stone on your palm and slide the tweezers underneath. And then you hold it by the top and the bottom of the stone. And then you look at it again and then you won't see those reflections. So you won't mistakenly think that the tweezers are something that's inside your stone. And this is the same um, for when your diamond is set in prongs or whatever metal is holding the diamond in place. You don't wanna think that those prongs are inclusions. So if you follow these simple directions on how to use a loop, you will certainly be a pro. And if you need help or have any questions, feel free to contact me and it'll be my pleasure to assist you, of course. And any other questions that you have about diamonds or gemstones, um, I will be very happy to assist you with. Um, so if you like this video, please give it a like or share it with anyone uh, that you know who needs to be a pro at using the loop.